you know, was reasonably um, successful through through school, mm. um, uh, and knew that I wanted to have a career that would stretch me and challenge me. Mm. Um, although law wasn't on the agenda, it's when you find that thing. Yeah. You know, we often use those phrases. It, it, it's not work, but it, it gives you the energy to yeah. get up in the morning to keep going when things are tough, and, and things do get tough at yeah. times. So you have to have that sort of underlying passion for what you do, understanding that life requires an element of fortitude and resilience. Um, it's not going to be perfect. The whole group was, was breaking up. Um, at that point in time, I was a director of the UK business. And I felt that um, there was value in the business beyond the sort of financial elements. And it just told me, I think, that it's not always the easy path that is the best. Just being able to bring people together and say, look, you know, we've got a forum here. It's informal. It's a small community. Yeah. But we think you two would get on well. We think you've got some joint interests. Or maybe there's an opportunity to do some business. And without any other agenda, doing it because it's the right thing to do. I've taken through my career. Yeah. And actually, there is really a no substitute for hard work. Mm. To achieve something, um, you, you've, one, individually got to work hard but also get yourself in a, in a band of sisters and brothers who are prepared to work hard with you as well. Then, then you can really achieve some great things. He said, of integrity, um, it's doing the right thing even when no one's watching. I'm on a mission to help the world to see success differently. Through sharing the stories of our guests, I hope to inspire those that listen. This is the Different Hats podcast, produced by H2 Productions. I hope you can join us on this journey. Okay, I'm just going to say something about one of our sponsors, Rivervale. The world of cars, vans and minibuses is often a pain point for many of us. The hassle of finding the right vehicle, let alone looking after it, are all more things to add to our lists as busy people. Rivervale's mission is to make motoring manageable, and that's why they provide leasing, purchasing, servicing and vehicle management. So whether you have one family car or a fleet of vans for your business, Rivervale are your trusted vehicle supplier. Visit www rivervale.co.uk okay let's jump back to the podcast okay welcome to another episode of the podcast today i'm joined by a partner at emw law having moved to emw law after holding senior level leadership roles as gc and coo within u.s corporates private equity and uk plc organizations plus he's a pretty good golfer <laughs> i'm delighted to welcome a very good friend Aidan done into the podcast. Aidan, how are you, mate? I'm very good, Sam. Thank you very much for sharing this time with me. Mate. It's always, always a pleasure. Mate, it's going to be awesome. I had to chuck the golf in there, mate, as a fellow Team Blue and bringing it home for me in the Rockin' Horse Rider Cup this year. Where, um, we do what we do, eh? We do what we do. I love it. I love it. Mate, listen, we, we, we've known each other for a couple of years now, I guess, and, and loads of conversations over playing golf and you know being out for a drink and done some stuff together as well. Um and just I've had such similar values on so many things, and I've and I've been really excited about actually having having you on the podcast and talking about I guess your story and your journey, um, and delving into some of those and where those values and stuff come from. So I'd look, we're going to kick off as we always do. We've got our life in sixty seconds. Just tell me a little bit um, about something from your childhood that sort of helped shape you. Sits in front of me today. Yeah, yeah, no, no problem, Sam. Um, yeah, fairly unremarkable childhood. Um, not a lot of struggles that, that I had to deal with early on. Um, yeah, loving family, sport, silly by grandparents and, and parents who, who worked hard to provide um, me with opportunities to do anything that interests me, you know, whether it be sports, music, um, books and whatever. But I think, you know, early on, I had a very good group of friends um, going through school, uh, friends that are still with me today. Uh, and I think one of those things that when I, when I look back... Um, the value of that uh, loyalty and friendship uh, mm -hmm. and some of the, the the values that sit within those friendships uh, are really important to me and have uh, formed part of my ethos through life. Yeah, I 
love that. And it is such a valuable thing. I'm similar. I've got, you know, I've got mates who I've grown up with, went to school with, and know that they, you know, they walk over hot coals for me and I'll do the same for them. And uh, there's something so valuable in that, isn't there? Yeah, definitely. And, and those relationships, you know, they're, they're not fueled all the time, mm. perhaps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Life circumstance and what yeah. have you. Um, it, you know, it might be it might be a short amount of time between opportunities to catch up or a long period of time, but somehow you click back in um, yeah. to, to those relationships. And as you say, you know, you know yeah. they've got your back and, yeah. and if anybody needs anything, then hopefully they know that, that I'll be there for them. Yeah, I, lo- I love that. And I, I look, only re- re- as we're recording this literally a few days ago, is that one of my best mate's birthdays and I didn't text him on his birthday and you're like, how does that how have I let that happen and then message him the next day give him a call when you speak to him and you go like you, you know what and he, he was saying it, exactly that sometimes life gets in the way and Absolutely. these things happen and blah 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 but actually I know no matter what you're, you're there for me when you need it and I think, yeah. yeah when it's when it's important yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah exactly okay I guess following on from that then talk to me a little bit about just that period I guess life growing up and, and from you and I guess moving into law was that always something that you was gonna go into or what was your your childhood dreams i guess and where did you w- w- talk yeah to you about well, that? well as mentioned before i played a lot of sport yeah i, I like riding bikes yeah. uh of, of many forms whether it be road bikes or bmx yeah. uh back in the day football you know yeah. continue playing football whenever i could um but I, you know, was reasonably um, successful through through school, mm. um, uh, and knew that I wanted to have a career that would stretch me and challenge me. Mm. Um, although law wasn't on the agenda, um, mm. it, it was happenstance, really. Uh, I, like a lot of contemporaries at the time, um, looked at accountancy um, and those kind of roles. Lots mm. of people going into banking and the like at the time, uh, and I went along for for an interview. Um, bookkeeping role at a law firm uh, local to where I lived in in Harrow in uh, northwest London uh, very pleasant interview I got thanked for for putting on a suit and, and, and being <laughs> being very polite um, but it, as I talked about sort of further education and qualifications mm. um, it, it didn't match what what he was looking for at the time mm. but he gave me a call two weeks later and said look um, been thinking about that interview, um, uh, and there was an opportunity in, in the litigation team. Uh, it presented itself, unfortunately, because the partner in that team had been diagnosed with prostate cancer, um, recovered well mm. afterwards, but but retired from the practice, and it left the junior lawyer in in need of some support. Um, so they invited me along for for an interview on the Thursday afternoon. Mm. Uh, I stayed for the rest of that day and the Friday uh, and, and then started my career in law, really. As I say, yeah, happenstance rather than yeah. design. But uh, I, I'm very pleased for the opportunities and challenges that, that's afforded me. That's amazing, I guess, like, from a... Obviously, you come across very well in interview for them to, I guess, create that opportunity. I, you know, I... Yeah very green kid at the time um as i say yeah polite put a suit on talked talked about what i wanted to do you know i i I was clear in my mind that that, um i wanted to have a professional career of some sort uh so talked about accountancy exams and the like yeah um it just went in with a with a plan for the interview i guess yeah what 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 did your parents do what did they okay uh so my my mum was a was a hairdresser um, okay. my, my dad sold um, car parts from, from a van yeah. um, El Sparfax days <laughs> um, so yeah r- regular working class yeah. parents uh, growing up in, in North West London yeah. and, it, and excited for you to go into law and yeah you know um, different you talk about sort of generational yeah. stuff uh, we hadn't had anybody in law uh, in the family yeah. it wasn't that kind of dynasty um, so yeah, it was different, uh, yeah. and yeah, like everything else that they'd done, they supported me. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah I, I remember going through uh, in my early years. If if I wanted to try something, they created that opportunity for me, and, and they, yeah, they were. I think you know very pleased that yeah, uh, yeah. I was looking at that kind of career. Okay, because uh, uh, obviously you, you you've got kids as well now as well. I guess them through the education system and the way, I guess 
things on there like creating opportunities for our kids is what we want to try and achieve isn't it and just giving them the so open open the door for them to be able to have, have opportunities to opportunities to. yeah I, the number of times i talked to to my kids yeah. uh, about keeping your options open yeah. um yeah, we could probably have a, a whole raft of discussions and, and different podcasts about the education system yeah, yeah, sure, uh, sure, at the sure. moment. But but definitely doing things that provide them with opportunities. Um, yeah. And as a parent, to give them opportunities to try things that might light that fire and the passion for them. Because um, yeah. when you find that thing, yeah. you know, we often use those phrases, it, it, it's not work. But it, it gives you the energy to mm-hmm. get up in the morning, to keep going when things are tough. And, and things do get tough at yeah. times. So you have to have that sort of underlying passion for what you do. Because that, that, for me, that's such a key message for anyone listening, anyone in business, anyone looking to start a business or, or a new career, whatever that might look like. Got to do something that you love. For, for me, I constantly say to the kids, just what do you love? What do you enjoy doing? What lights you up? I guess that's what you, that's all you want for the kid. I, 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 like I said, I don't want to go too much into the education. But I don't. I spoke about it on a podcast recently about uh, doesn't necessarily lend itself to being able to dream and think slightly outside. Or well, an understanding that people are individuals. Yeah. Kids, are, kids are very much individuals. Yeah. yeah. What floats one's boat at a particular point in time yeah. in their life journey is going to be vastly different. Yeah. You know, the, the years are massive in terms of their percentage of life experience at that point yeah, in time. Yeah, yeah. So you know, how are you going to know at such an early age unless you have opportunity to explore you know, what it, it might be musically, it might be artistically, it, it might be academically. Yeah. You, you, know, you really can't streamline um, you know, individuals at yeah. that, that early age. And I guess you know, it's a learning for me. You know, yeah, I, yeah. As a parent, yeah. it's something that challenges us and, 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 and sort of makes us grow. Yeah. As you walk through life as a parent for the first time, yeah. you've got certain expectations and you do have to be careful yeah. not, to, not to apply too much pressure or, yeah. or, or push your kids down a path that's not right for them maybe. Yeah. Yes, yeah, look, very, very much so. Look, you, you do, I was very much being a massive football fan was of course both kids were going to play for England right? mm. <laughs> when, when they show no interest in football you for, England? Just, uh, for England for England <laughs> <laughs> but, but possibly possibly but you, you do you do wonder whether they go that you, you, you can't you, like you said you can't go to that point where you go and live your life through your kids right you just got to allow them to and they will they will find their own way and you my, my main thing is to try and encourage, like you said, to create opportunities to be able to allow them to try stuff that they go, yeah, no, that's not for me or that's not for me. And there will be that thing that does yeah. light them up. I'm keen, keen to just touch on something I, I talk about a lot again about about for failure. And I guess, you know, remember when I was first a parent, you sort of go, you don't want them to fail anything either. But... I almost say encourage that now, but I do ask it most days. What did you fail at today? What well, I'm keen to. What, what's your, what's your relationship with failure, and uh, has that been with the, your kids as well? Yeah, I, you know, there's lots of of discussion and narrative about failure and the fact that that those are learning opportunities mm. and, and and that we shouldn't be worried about it. Yeah. Fail fast and all the, all of yeah, those yeah, yeah. all of those things. Um, you know, this goes back to resilience, probably. Um, you know those other phrases that you, know, you don't fail, you just continue. You know, you, yeah, you only fail if you stop. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So for for me, uh, uh, particularly with with um, you know my my children, um, understanding that life requires an element of fortitude and resilience. Yeah. Um, it's not going to be perfect. Yeah. You know, you're not going to get the rewards that you think you deserve early on. It's you sort of, you know, you're young and headstrong and yeah. you think you do X and it's going to get out Y outcome. Um, yeah. doesn't work that way. So you have to be prepared uh, to deal with that and the disappointment that yeah. comes along when things don't map out quite the way you want them to. Yeah. I think that's really interesting. Like, again, quite a good message around things being perfect. We, we are, I guess, in a society, we tend to sometimes feel that oh, if that's not quite right um, oh, it's not perfect so I, I won't start that or I won't do that or I've started that and it's not perfect I'll, I'll just get rid of that I, I think there's a real split now um, I, I, I think that 
often um, it's difficult for people to start on journeys mm. um, where they can't see every step through to the outcome that they want. Um, but I also think that businesses generally, um, because of Brexit and COVID and, and recessionary pressure and those kind of things, they've now got used to working and delivering in uncertain times. Mm. So management teams have actually become more match fit to deal with those problems um, so that it's no longer business as usual and then big change projects and then return to business as usual. Yeah. I think management teams are, are looking for those people that they want to work with who can problem solve along the way, um, who are joint with them in the outcome that you want to achieve. So you create that North Star, you understand where you're heading yeah. and that you know that you'll adapt and deal with issues and problems along the way. Yeah, I love that. And, uh, well, talk, talk to me then a, bit, a little bit about, I guess, like, do you think so much of that has changed since COVID? Do you think over the last three years there's been a, quite a shift in that since then? I think, I think it's a bit longer than that, really? uh, you know, but I, but I think there's a definite change in the model from businesses having this sort of business as usual. Yeah. The pace of change, you know, whether it be technology um, you know, driving that or, or, or just competitiveness, uh, reduced margins in, in lots of businesses, yeah. more competition has, me, has, has meant that, that teams and businesses have got to you know, fail faster. They've, yeah, got, they've yeah, got to yeah, deliver. Yeah, yeah. You know, there yeah. they, they, they really is that um, need to, to problem solve along yeah. the way. Yeah, okay. And so, well, talk to me then. I guess a bit about some of the most over the over the course of your career within the legal sector in different, um, I guess, different types of law firms where you where you've got to now. Talk to me a little bit about some of those aspects of, of the law, how you've seen that change, I guess, over the years and from your perspective? Yeah, I think probably um, it's worth setting it the scene a little bit. I, you know, my, my career, as I, as I see it, has sort of got three phases to it. Um, mm. The first phase, uh, I spent 21 years working for three companies. Um, I worked at Legal and General for seven years. Mm. Uh, I worked at um, National Magazine, which is now Hearst Magazines, for seven years. Mm. Uh, and then I worked for CBS Outdoor, which is now part of Global Media, for seven years. There's, there seems to be this sort of seven-year itch. Yeah, yeah. Um, very stable uh, in, my, in the roles that I had, yeah. even though the responsibilities I had in each role changed as I took on more responsibility yeah. over, over each of the, uh, those, um, those roles in the businesses for those seven years. Um, but particularly stable, yeah. you know, I, I um, earned my spurs, if you like, in, in, <laughs> in, in those businesses. There were some big challenges in each of those roles, mm -hmm. um, dealing with some sort of bet the farm type litigation yeah. um, that was successfully resolved, looking at uh, solvent restructure in, in one of the other businesses. Uh, and particularly picking up on the, the, the magazine business, mm. moving from just providing commercial legal advice to working with the editorial teams and doing magazine clearance there, oh, right. where communication was um, a significant part of that relationship. Mm. We'd gone from suits, um, maybe open neck, you know, no tie in those days, where it was a defensive relationship. The editorial guys, they wanted to write their stories. They felt the lawyers were just getting in the way uh, <laughs> and being obstructive. Uh, and we very quickly recognized that actually by dressing similar, non-verbal communication, just broke down a lot of barriers, mm -hmm. um, really helped to um, feel like we were sat on the same side. Mm -hmm. you know, we were helping them achieve their, their goals. Um, but it, you know, each of those had a challenge, but it was a very stable 21 years, um, mm. you know, working as legal director and, and general counsel, um, building legal teams. Uh, and then sort of phase two was a bit quicker pace. Uh, I moved into tech businesses yeah. and had moved away or, or added to my legal responsibilities uh, and taken on more managerial responsibilities, mm. um, moving into the COO roles that you mentioned yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. at the outset. Um, in the last of those stable roles, I'd taken on responsibility for HR and, and health and safety as well and was able to really take some things from those disciplines, the way they worked, uh, and then helped when I was working in, in the tech industries that were much faster paced. Um, that phase two lasted six years. It involved two businesses that went through um, growth and exit from very different positions. Um, uh, and 
the last one of which we were able to um, successfully realize the value in that business for, for the four original directors. Um, and I wasn't sure where I was going after that. Mm. You know, I'd, I'd taken a bit of a pause. Um, I could take some time out, which was, which was nice, nice yeah. for the family. And um, decided that I was gonna set up my own consultancy. Uh, my ideal was four or five clients of different industries, of different types of people that I could work with, enjoy working with. Uh, I could be selective about it. Uh, so I started that consultancy. Um, at the same time, I was being pestered by a recruitment agent uh, who uh, at the time had had an 18, 19 year relationship with EMW. Mm. Uh, and after a bit of persuasion, uh, he decided, uh, I decided to have a conversation with him. Um, coming up to the three year anniversary, uh, <laughs> being with the MW, I, I don't regret that <laughs> conversation. <laughs> yeah. uh, but, it, but it's led to me realizing, um, you know, this sort of phase three in my career in a, in a law firm, um, which was never on the cards for me. Mm. You know, the, the in-house legal profession uh, feels somewhat different. What, 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 why is that? Because the in-house, because you was involved in a specific company and you, you was part of that vision of that company for something that was separate from the legal thing maybe, or what, talk to me Yeah, I, I, like, I think you get very vested yeah, with, yeah. with the company and, and the product yeah, 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 uh, sure. that, that it provides. Um, and effectively you've got one client. Yeah, right? yeah, sure. um, and, yeah you, and then you're learning about the business, you know, what's going on, it's yeah. risk appetite and those kind of things. But it's largely perception, that difference. You know, what, what I have found, and I was un uncertain about it yeah. when I when I first took the leap. Um, it's not that different. Yeah, yeah. Sure. You you have more clients, but you're doing the same thing. You're yeah. building relationships with the stakeholders. You're understanding those businesses. Yeah. You can't advise in a vacuum, so you really need to know all of the other stuff that's going on within yeah. the business um, to be able to deliver proper value yeah. for them. Yeah, I see. I do, I do want to touch on the, the I'm interested in just your period within the, the working for the tech companies as well, like what that that fast paced thing you mentioned that you alluded to a little bit earlier, what what, like what that's like within working within organisations, especially going I guess from I guess rapid growth to then exit as well. Yeah. That journey is like for for people. What was it like to be on that? Within involved within that type of organisation. Yeah, it's uh, and it's one of the things that I've done at EMW actually is recognising there's a number of clients that are going through that phase, mm -hmm. and that actually you can bring them together and and form uh, a community around that. I know that's a lot of, of yeah. what you do, Sam. Um, yeah. you're bringing people together. Um, that have got common interests. And, and, and early on in EMW, I, I sort of felt the need to bring these people together yeah. to share some of those experiences because it's tough. Yeah. You know, it, um, you're working with different individuals and, and different problems. I mean, both of those roles that I had in the two businesses are very different. They come yeah. from different places. The first one was a US owned business. You know, that was a, that was a, um, a similarity to, to those other roles that I had yeah. at, at CBS and at Hearst. You know, US yeah. corporates, um, I was you know, well versed in operating in, 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 in that sphere um, and understanding what it's like to work with both remote management and you know, US parents. So the first role that I went into was that environment. We had uh, a US CEO, he was head of an organization that was probably 50 or 60 different companies that had been acquired. Mm. And they were trying to form uh, one collegiate group out of it. And uh, it, it didn't work um, in spectacular fashion um, to the point that ultimately the whole group was, was breaking up. Um, at that point in time, I was a director of the UK business. And I felt that um, there was value in the business beyond the sort of financial elements that we looked at. You know, it was a, it was a, a period of real uncertainty mm. for that business. The US parent filed for uh, bankruptcy protection in the US. All of this stuff is clearly in the, in the public domain. Yeah. Um, 
but rather than take the easy option there. Uh, and, I, and I'd been counselled by you know, my legal director and my finance director at the time. You know, I had the, the COO role in that business. Um, the easy option would have been to close down that UK business. Yeah. Um, but there was 127 employees. Um, we provided uh, digital transformation projects and supported the infrastructure on those projects yeah. afterwards. So we had, a, we had a number of multinational clients that relied on, on that service. Um, and I felt there was something there, something worth protecting right. and maintaining. So in a, you know, I guess a somewhat risky backdrop, decided that we would try and find new owners for that business. Went through an accelerated uh, M&A process you know, with lots of advisors at the time. And we found uh, private equity backers. Uh, and myself and the sales director at the time uh, was supported by that private equity through an MBO. And we took that business uh, out of the US ownership. Uh, we went through a, a CVA process. Mm -hmm. We paid 850,000 pounds to the creditors as part of that process. And we got the business up and running as a standalone business, uh, ran it for 12 months, and ultimately sold it to a trade buyer uh, in the UK. And wow. you know, the big thing out of that for me is that you know, we gave those 127 employees the choice about whether or not they wanted to carry on working there. Mm -hmm. And we never lost a client through the process. Wow. And, and, and how many of the 127 stuck like, when, Did all of them want to stay or did some? I, I mean, o over the course of that year, yeah. you know, people then took the opportunity yeah. to move when they wanted to. Um, but we maintained a, a high number. Yeah, we were, we were probably in the high 90s wow. uh, in terms of employees when we sold the business a year later. Uh, as I say, we kept all of the clients, yeah. continued to maintain that, that service. Um, and, it, and it just told me, I think, that it's not always the easy path that is the best. There is definite value to maintain that. I love that. Not uh, what, what a key thing for me that I to really take out of that. Not only two things really. One, it's not always the easy path, granted. But two, actually, from your mindset, being able to, and this for me, this is a really valuable thing for any business. Actually, sometimes, if we just look at the finances and it's the black and white, it, you, you can look at them and go, yeah, that don't look great for you to have that vision and see something else there, whether it be the values, whatever, we've got something here. There's potential that we can grow on this. The numbers will take care of themselves. I'll get X, Y, and Z right. Mm. That's something That's something quite special. Well, I, I, I think we, we've, we've talked about this. I, I mean, this is, this is, again, something that after a, quite a lengthy career, you, you get to realise a bit later on. There are certain things that if you focus on them, uh, and, and and the outcome and the, you know those financials or these 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 metrics, um, you try and force it, mm. but actually what you want to do is consider that those things happen as a byproduct of the other things that you do right and that you do well, yeah. uh, and if it's governance and if it's you know just attitude, then if you're doing all of that stuff well then revenue or culture or you know, these, these other things are the successful byproducts of those mm. rather than the things that you should strive for and, and try and attain. I, I, I think it's useful to see them as, as byproducts of, of good governance and doing the right thing. Well, that's such a great outlook. And it's better, especially, I guess, like from, from a legal professional or and someone within a professional environment to have that type of outlook as well and and I guess from I know from obviously times we spoke about before within EMW that type of culture that type of view and that vision is something that you guys have within within the EMW family and how that that sort of pans out because I, I'm I'm a hundred percent agree with that and I do think that actually the metrics that there's got to be metrics in some way, shape, or form. But actually, if you've got a why and you've got a vision and you and 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 those values and everyone adheres to that, 
and you're all on that journey together, if that, so there's that strong belief in that, all these other bits will be taken care of. Yeah, and, and it, it's along. also, you know, let's not shy away from the fact that businesses are there to be profitable. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. There's, yeah. There's the reason why they shouldn't be profitable and successful. When they are successful and profitable, mm. then actually that means that you've got progression within businesses. Mm. You've got careers that can be built by the people who aspire to, to grow their, their, mm. their, their own careers. You're creating challenges, mm. interesting work for people to do. Mm. Um, but it's just kind of going back to that viewpoint that these are the byproducts of the successful um, mm setting of a North Star, a goal, the why, yeah, whatever it is. Yeah. Um, uh, and that that element it, it should be more important um, when you're building, growing teams and businesses. And is your, your mindset around that, is that, is that ch have, you, have you sort of always had that sort of outlook or has that changed over the course of the years with different experiences and different yeah, roles? I, 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 I think like most, you know, if you met me as a as a young green lawyer um i'd have been that headstrong you know if i if i do this and it's really good then i should get y outcome yeah um so i think it, it definitely does come um with with experiences and and scars probably yeah. you know yeah. i think you have to live through through some of that yeah. um but it, it's very much um i guess the the value of working with teams and people yeah, you know, I go back to sports. Those early days, I like yeah. football. I like being part of a team. I like yeah. playing Sunday morning football. Cam the camaraderie that's there, yeah. um, uh, and it's the same in in the teams that I've worked with and I've built um, mm. with it, within all of these businesses. If you get that culture, mm. you know, we spend a lot of time at work. Yeah. We put a lot of energy into it. Um, so, you know, first of all, you want to do it with people that you like spending that time with. Yeah. Um, but you you've got to have a purpose for it. You you got to you got to communicate that and agree it and and have everyone buy into it, um, mm. so that they know why it's worth them their time and their effort. Yeah, yeah I got, and, then, and a couple of things to take, I guess that that you've touched on actually uh, throughout the whole conversation so far about communication, right? like especially within a team, those levels of communication, whether that be with clients, whether that be with the team around you that you're working with that's so valuable no uh well and, and i think going back to the question you asked about emw mm. yeah and its cultures the, the idea that um we are there to add value mm. right um but it's not just add value in the client relationships that mm. direct you know exchange of professional services for fees um of course you know we we need to add value to yeah. our clients businesses um, we need to support their growth um, and, and build those relationships. We want those relationships over mm. a long period of time. Um, it's, this isn't and cannot be transactional mm. for us. That relationship has got to be long time, long term. But actually, it's broader than that. You know, it's the relationships we've got with each other within our teams. Mm. It's the relationship we've got with the partners that we work with, with the businesses that are around us, whether or not they're clients. Mm. You know, the, the society we we operate in. And one of the things that we have within the commercial team and at ENW generally is that there's a real balance mm. between all of those things. Mm. You know, we, we often talk about work-life balance and those kind of things, but actually it's much more multifaceted than that. Mm. Um, the fact that we add value in all of these different pockets mm. uh, and that these things are held in balance. We don't, you know, we don't over put over importance on the client relationship mm -hmm. versus what we're doing. Um, you know, in in the local area, mm. we do we do need to juggle those things, yeah. um, and and when it's working really well, that's that's yeah. all working in balance. Yeah. I love that, and you talk about as you've spoke a couple of times about community and how, how valuable that is, and how especially like I'd be interested to your take on the community you're in now as part of because you really integrated great with, with us and our community and 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 brighton i guess and sussex as a whole um what you've tried to achieve from, from your previous experience with i guess in-house law firms maybe slightly different from that but how, how do you, how, how does that 
compare your previous career to where you are now with BMW and ing- integrated into the community now? Uh, uh, what, what are your thoughts on the community, I guess? Yeah. I, this is and it, it sort of immediately think about about one thing. Um, when I chose to join EMW, um, there were several factors that were mm. important to me. Um, I've worked with lots of city law firms, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah as, as external advisors in the legal teams that I built up, but I wouldn't have joined them. Mm. Um, there were factors in that discussion about EMW and, and the way in which it approaches relationships with clients that was important to me. Um, but also important was the fact that I was coming in to help lead an office um, based in Crawley mm. uh, that was therefore local. You know, mm. The difference between those other roles is perhaps not the roles themselves, but mm. geography. I'd worked and travelled in and out of London um, for, for 26, 27 years. And, and the immediate thing was I was going to be closer to home. You know, I was going to be back for dinner times with the with the children's, which is an uncertainty for anybody who works and, and travels in and out of London. Mm. You, know, you know, late meetings, missed trains, mm. connections, all those kind of things makes that more difficult. Um, but actually, there's a much bigger element there. Mm. You know, that you are in and amongst the community that you're working in. You have many more connections. Mm. Those interactions that you have with people are deeper. They're more real. You know, it's not millions of people shipping in and out of London mm. uh, with that sort of almost um, uh, anonymous vibe that you get with yeah. that. It's, you know, why yeah. tube travel is so difficult, yeah. right? You, you have the ability to, to be much more involved in what's going on locally. Mm. Yeah, I love that. I, 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 I completely agree, obviously, uh, with the community, obviously trying to build... Well, I'm trying to, I guess, as well. And, and w- the one thing I think that's really key there for me is, and something me and you have touched on many, many times, and the whole no like and trust element of it is that actually going out and just building relationships, communicating, being part of the community. And I think, like you said, you from my, from me getting to know you, I guess, and and, and some of the other team at EMW, that actually just going into an environment and just building relationships, just getting on with people, whether that whether that's a client or not, just building relationships with yeah. them and, and doing it and doing it just because. Yeah, it right? is. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, the yeah. right thing to do. Yeah, yeah, it's a nice thing to do. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you can't plot you know, A plus B equals C for for yeah, revenue yeah. or whatever. But actually, you know, some of the best things are being able to connect people. Yeah, you know, yeah, where, yeah. where I mentioned earlier the fact that you've got couple of people you think are dealing with a similar problem yeah, yeah, yeah being yeah. able to bring them together yeah perhaps engineer it a little yeah. bit around a, a breakfast session uh, yeah. where we talk about particular topics we've done one recently on ai mm. uh, and use of technology we've got one coming up here about b corp mm. um in in the in the near future just being able to bring people together mm. and say look you know we've got a forum here it's informal it's a small community mm. But we think you two would get on well. We think you've got some joint interest, or maybe there's an opportunity to do some business. And without any other agenda, doing it because it's the right thing to do. I think that's the, that's such a powerful thing in business as a whole, and anyone listening, I think, is that that it's going into, it's, it's going into things, doing certain, certain things within the community with no agenda. Well, we're, you know, it, this probably goes back quite a bit to COVID, mm. right? Because I, I, I think a lot of businesses and their approach and attitude became more visible, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. And people were judging mm. that more. Yeah, yeah. We, we moved more towards your local artisanal baker. Yeah. You know, we're, we're understanding the value of some authenticity yeah. now. Yeah. Um, and the actions that businesses take are going to be a big factor in your choices about services you buy, acquire mm. products, that you're, you're going to be associated with, your employer of choice mm. and how you're going to work. You know, these things are really much more important now than they were pre-COVID. Yeah, I, 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 complete, I completely agree. And I, I certainly from, I guess, as well, like we're, we're talking about clients and, and community and business, but actually from recruitment side of things, like you said, like more members of staff come into, because like you said, people are like, oh, I've got to be a, a lot more transparent and they have got to be 
a lot more flexible and they've got to look at things in it because actually people coming into certain roles now or joining joining, joining certain organisations are looking at not just what that pay packet is but all of them other things that come with it. Right? That, that balance, right? You know, <laughs> yeah, 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 how, yeah. how you interact with people around you, the legacy, you know, the kind of work that you, you're going to be involved in. Yeah. Um, is it pushing you? Is it driving you? Yeah. Are you going to grow as a person? Are you going to be able to help out in society? Are you going to be available? You know, if the relative needs support, you know, are you going to be able to take your dog for a walk in the afternoon? Yeah. All of these things fit within that new ecosphere that we're working in. Yeah, no, no, yeah, 100%. Well, look, we, we've touched on COVID a couple of bits there. It leads us quite nice, I guess, into the, the, the you mentioned a, a few minutes back about scars that you get over the course of it. Let, I just want to, I just want to interject now with the, the next life in 60 seconds, talking a little bit about challenges. Um, over your over your career life in general, talk to me about a challenge that you maybe have faced and what you what you've learned from that. Um, I, I said before, with each, with each role, there's, there's sort of one yeah, yeah. one l- major challenge with each of them. Um, you know, we had big bet the farm litigation uh, mm. that lasted four four or five years in in one role. Mm. Um, that was a real drain on me uh, at one point. My family, you know, would have made sacrifices dur- during that period of time. I was not available to them for for long periods of of time because I was so consumed in that and 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 the risk that. We're inherent in the business in, in that, um, yeah, the, the MBO business where you know we, we had um, questions over parent company solvency and, and those kind of things, uh, having to communicate very transparently and openly mm-hmm. with, with the clients um, with significant risk uh, that they might walk away. Um, but I think the, probably the, the biggest one um, was joining a firm that it had been run. You know, successfully for, for 18, 19 years with four directors who, who had reached a point of deadlock uh, and a stalemate. Um, uh, and I think through my joining as a fifth director, you know, it enabled some voting to happen mm-hmm. uh, to break that deadlock. But for me to bring in some commerciality uh, to, to the operations there and, and drive it forward over, over the course of three years uh, to ultimately lead to the value of that business being realized for, for those four directors who had different aspirations, very different aspirations. Um, you know, whether or not it be buying a yacht or uh, <laughs> moving into retirement or, or becoming the CTO um, that, that, that one of the individuals always wanted to be. Um, it, it, it was a really difficult um, situation to, mm. to maneuver through with some very different personality types uh, within that group. Mm. Um, but I, you know, we talked a bit about successes and those kind of things. Mm. It, it, it probably doesn't go down as the biggest personal success for me. Mm. Um, I think it was a, a bit of a sacrificial lamb through through the process, but definitely by driving through some of those changes mm. uh, that that were necessary uh, within that business, um, it, it enabled that business to, to go on and thrive. Mm. And 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 the things that you take, I guess personally, that you take out of that going through that, navigating through that, those choppy waters. Try, I guess, f- for me, listening, trying to pick pick apart a little bit. I guess is that managing people's expectations and that levels of communication with different stakeholders within that situation that you had to come in and your key learning I guess from that what, what, what was it was it that how you can come in and infiltrate and and and, and turn something around that I, I think maybe because because I think there's lots of that yeah, yeah, stuff yeah, yeah, in, yeah. in how you navigate that um, but uh, but I think probably the biggest thing that was similar in in some of the other roles is being prepared to put yourself on the line uh, take personal risk with your career, mm. uh, with your aspirations, uh, and perhaps that to, or for the greater good of the business or the thing that you're trying to do and achieve, um, sometimes that's not al- always aligned with your own personal aspirations. Mm-hmm. Uh, so sometimes you can put yourself in harm's way 
um, to to achieve the goal. But you do so because it's the right thing to do. Yeah, yeah, I love that. I love that. And it is, I guess. And and th- anything in life, I guess, worth doing has got to be. It's got to be some form of risk element to it, isn't it? Uh, risk element uh, and hard work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, we, we probably haven't touched much on on hard work, but if yeah, I go yeah. if I go back to the beginning, yeah, you know, yeah. say the opportunities afforded to me by my parents, mm. um, they worked hard mm. to be able to offer me the opportunity to play the piano or the clarinet. Uh, God knows why they did that. Use, <laughs> useless at music. Um, <laughs> but I, I, you know, that's the other thing I've taken through my career. Yeah. It, it actually, there is really. And no substitute for hard work. Mm. To achieve something, um, you've, you've, one, individually got to work hard, but also get yourself in a, in a band of sisters and brothers who are prepared to work hard with you mm. as well. Then, then you can really achieve some great things. Yeah, I, I completely, I, I echo that definitely. The whole work ethic thing, I always say, like, one thing my mum and dad definitely give me was that uh, strong, strong work ethic. Um, and I, I like I like how you you mentioned there as well about getting that band of brothers and, and sisters around you to to be on that journey with you. And I guess these things, we've delved a little bit into the culture piece and stuff like that. I'm really keen to something I find fascinating. Me and you have spoke about it many times um, offline. I, I mentioned to you about the salon. How I've got got the culture wrong there, but and. I, I believe probably the the main reason that didn't work out. I, I'm keen to talk a little bit more about the about the culture within AMW, and I guess that when you first come in and to where that is now as well over the last three years, what, how has that has it has that changed much? Or mm. talk to me a little bit about that. Well, start I and mean, I do go back to you know when I when I joined AMW, um, remembering I had a I had a lengthy in house career yeah. Um, yeah, with management roles I wasn't looking at joining a law firm mm. I didn't you know, have it's one of my career aspirations achieving yeah. partnership in a law firm yeah. many do who've been through you know, that sure. law firm from, from traineeship all the way through um, that's, the, that's the goal um, but as I was having those discussions um, I looked at some of the stories behind the people who were at EMW mm. um, I've had a career uh, coming from a, a, a non-standard educational background um, to law. Mm. Um, I've sat with legal directors and general counsels and counterparts in other businesses mm. who have been Oxford, Cambridge educated. And I somewhat felt slightly different. I had a different approach. Mm. Um, uh, and you know, maybe you're a little bit sensitive to that, mm. but it was certainly something I wanted to look at uh, and evaluate. You know, what did, was going on in EMW? Just to interject there, I, 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 when, when you're in that situation then, how do you, what, what's your thought process a, around that and your mindset? Is it something that's maybe, is there a little bit imposter syndrome? Does that come into that element at all? Or, or does it go the other way and you go, um, I might not have had a similar education to these people, but I'm in this room for a reason and I know I can do it brings value hard work right you know it goes back to that at that point of, yeah. uh, you know like you, you look I've had a life that's been blessed you know in lots of privileged positions that, that I've enjoyed mm. through, through my life um, yeah the a situation there where maybe somebody's looking down on me mm. um, yeah you know, I I've got that gene that says that I'm gonna prove that I I I, I, I worthy of this space um not to say that the imposter syndrome doesn't sit there somewhere in the, in the background and you know those sort of voices on either shoulder uh, it's definitely there but it it definitely steeled me um and has provided a drive that fuels that hard work and that passion for sure oh, I, I love that because i guess for me then there's the the people listening on we, we touched on it right at the start about the education system and again we won't, won't go back down that route but you, you you do for someone that's got young kids and for I do some work with the universities and the colleges and uh, locally and you look at okay, trying to inspire that next generation knowing that actually 
hard work will get you a lot lot further than potentially just that bit of paper on and sometimes to get that bit of paper takes a lot of hard work so i'm Absolutely. not i'm not saying that the education say oh, i don't get an education because obviously there's real value in that and i do i do obviously believe that but i love the fact that actually your view and standpoint on it is that 100 percent look I've, I've worked hard to get and i know that i can bring x amount to the table mm. from where i am and yeah. down to that hard work yeah and uh, yeah, when I joined EMW, what I, what I looked for in some of those stories um, was that point of difference. Mm. You know, they had, um, uh, and, and every time I see Sam, I remember this, uh, Sam used to work on the reception desk at, at EMW. Um, she didn't work for EMW, it was an outsourced function, mm. but she felt part of the family. Um, and when she left the business, she felt she'd missed something. Mm -hmm. And what EMW has done is to support her training. She now works in the company secretarial team. Uh, it's qualified in, 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 in that team. Um, we've got somebody else who worked his way up through the post room um, and has been supported through legal qualification and education. And those were the kinds of stories that told me that EMW had an open-minded approach to these things. Now, yeah. business is only made up of the people within it mm. and those making decisions at the top. But that showed me yeah, a level of care, mm -hmm. um, building of this family mm -hmm. environment, um, but actually that they were open to considering people from different backgrounds, mm -hmm. di with different experiences. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and you know, Talk about this kind of stuff as many many others have on on your podcast but how, how you get a well-performing team mm. is to have diversity of viewpoint yeah. and opinion uh, that's 100 percent. and 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 look we 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 can deal when you talk about diversity you talk about inclusion um and there'd be some there'd be some companies that will look at that and the same with B Corp and all those things that some some elements of their they've got to be a tick box exercise and they will follow them things. I think right at the core of someone's values as a as a company, as you've alluded to there, it's the open mindedness for difference and the open mindedness for diversity, for inclusion, all of those things that yeah. At, at the core of your values are so important though. Yeah, I, th th there are others uh, much more qualified to talk to me about the, the narrative of diversity and inclusion, mm -hmm. but what I do know is that when I'm looking for people um, and considering people to join teams that I've worked with in, mm -hmm. you know, in-house teams or, or, mm -hmm. or teams at EMW, I'm looking for somebody who's interested in different cultures, mm -hmm. um, you know, different foods, mm -hmm. different experiences, because that demonstrates an open-mindedness. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you've got an open mind, then you're far more likely to have a diverse and inclusive um, group of people mm. uh, around you. Yeah, I love it. And, in, and I guess that, that open-minded approach, irrespective of diversity and inclusion, but that, that open-minded approach to, to how you do things, how you recruit, how you get clients, how you go out into the community and build the the business that in itself has got it, 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 it there's a strength there no i well being being interested in mm. yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. wanting to find out uh, other things yeah. um you know the continued desire to grow to learn mm. uh from, from other factors um you know i had a, a legal career that sort of expanded out and, and uh, mentioned earlier moved into being responsible for HR and, and health and safety teams. And I remember sitting down with, with these people who come from different disciplines, and uh, particularly with the health and safety guys, the way in which they would analyse a situation, an event, to go back and unpick what had happened. Um, and in a very procedural way, look at opportunities mm. to improve things. You know, that continuous improvement. Um, Kaizen, uh, you yeah, know, yeah, these yeah. small incremental changes yeah. that add up to big, big things over time. Yeah. Um, that's something that, you know, I learned fairly late on in my career yeah. from being prepared to go and work with a discipline that I'd never, never been involved in before. But, you know, I guess that's, uh, I 
I guess listening to you, your open mindedness and I get what, what I found about getting to know you a little bit more and it's come out quite a bit I guess through it through the conversation you seem to have a natural curiosity about life and, and like the conversations we've had in the past and I guess by being curious it creates more open mindedness to be able to accept different elements of, uh, of individuals people cultures and stuff like that because You've got that natural, inquisitive mind and and curious about things. No? It's just it's just enjoyable, isn't it? Yeah. You know, if you're you meeting meeting people, being open to to having those those discussions, um, forming relationships with yeah. with people later on in life um, that that you connect with, you don't get that connection unless you are open and and willing to um, explore some of those things. Um, yeah, it just just makes everything much more enjoyable, yeah. much more interesting. I love it. I love it. I'd, li- I'd like to. We talked obviously. I, I mentioned what at the start about sort of leadership, I guess, um, and your different leadership roles and building teams and stuff like that. Uh, talk to me a little bit more about that element of it um, as a leader, the type of leader that you are, how, how you work with teams, what. Be also really keen, and also to talk. I think we have spoke a bit more around soft skills and stuff like that. Talk, talk to me a little bit about leadership from your point of view and how you sort of lead. Um, I probably find that a little bit difficult. I, you know, um, mainly because it's being part of a team. Mm. Um, it probably defines the role that you have in that team, mm. but you're still part of a team and part of a machine that's going to do something together. Mm -hmm. So maybe um, you take more responsibility for ensuring that you've got an agreed purpose, Mm -hmm. what that North Star is. Um, Maybe you've got to think more about communication. Maybe you've got to think about more about uh, ensuring that work done by people in that team is seen um, in in the right um, manner Mm -hmm. and, and by the right people to sort of promote those within the team and the work that they're doing. Um, but ultimately, it's just a role in a role in a team, um, uh, and and I guess that's probably the ethos that I've always had is that you know it's not a job in and of itself. You've still got to be a member of that team. Um, I, I can't imagine a situation where I wouldn't be rolling up my sleeves and doing the same work as everybody else. Yeah. Um, not least because it it's still really interesting. Yeah. You know, I I I, do, I like those cold towel. You know, dark room legal drafting moments. Mm. Uh, you know, it's, it's a it's a nice um, counterpoint to the BD networking mm. um, and other parts of the role. Uh, and I, I, you know, it goes back to you know, I think a standard point. Don't you wouldn't expect to sit there and direct other people to do something that you either couldn't do or wouldn't do yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but but not. I guess in certain organisations, there's a hierarchy, and certain. You you alluded a few times to EMW as being a being a family, and I guess that to to have a cohesive family, sometimes you do have to have people that are of certain characters and stronger leaders, and other people that won't and will come in and and navigate those conversations and communicate in slightly different ways mm. I guess the I guess one of the key things I, get, I guess looking at that as a whole is that you there's all different skill sets and as long as people are working to their best skill sets then yeah I, 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 no, I think the, the other thing there is identifying not just skill sets mm. but the way some people work and, mm. the, and that we're all individuals yeah, you know, yeah, we yeah. talked before um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, a, about our children and now yeah. they're individual and, yeah. and you've got to allow them the space and, and the time to develop mm. um, to find their own interests um, within any team you're going to have people who work in different ways mm. um, the way that they get the best out of their efforts is going to be different mm. um, so ensuring that there's an environment that everybody's allowed to do and work in the way that is best for them yeah. uh, is is important. I think there. Mm. Yeah, yeah, love it, love it. Okay, 
Um, as we come we're coming to sort of, I guess, towards the end and, and the main thing that we always talk about, success, and we've alluded to a little bit over the over the course of the conversation, but um, our last life in 60 seconds before we sort of come to, towards the end will be where you've been, where you are, where you're going. What's your definition of success? Mm. Yeah, I, I, it's a really interesting question. Um, and I know one that comes up on your top table events, yeah. uh, which is which is always fascinating when mm. it does um, because you, you see people talk about um, their journeys and um, what, how they define success. Um, and, I, and I've heard this, uh, and, I, and, I, and I like this a lot, is that actually goes back to byproduct mm. stuff. You know, success probably isn't a thing, isn't a, a, a you know a goal to achieve. Mm. It's more about the way in which you approach things. For me, um, if you can have a mindset that it's okay to just just to do the right thing, allow the other elements mm. to be a byproduct of getting those things right. Um, then I think we've got things right. Mm -hmm. um, you, know, you might not be able to put that on a, a sort of pedestal or a you know, medal. <laughs> um, you might, it might not be so tangible. Um, but, but I think for me, is if, if, you can, if you can ensure that the way in which you're operating, which you can control, mm. um, fits within that ethos uh, and you can be happy with yourself, Mm. Um, that you're doing the right thing, then um, yeah, that's probably contentment and success. Mm. You know, somewhere, somewhere between those two things for me. Uh, uh, I guess certainly, and in, in the conversations I've had around our top table events, uh, you know, on, on the podcast as a whole, and I guess that my mission is to try and see how we define success in a, and and get the world to see success in a slightly different way. Is that that financial status in where so much in business and in life and it, that's the metric in which we measure it like for me talking to you and listening to you talk as I have done uh, with, with the top table events and other people that have spoke is that it's really not that it is that are we, am I doing the right thing like for me it's always about if I can put my head on a pillow at night and sleep well Go, you know what? I've done the right thing today. It may mean, may mean that I'm a pound note behind some people, <laughs> um, but I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that because I, because one of a podcast really recently, a big thing that come out around success was was the word integrity, mm. and it's probably one of the values that I hold d most dear. I guess if I can go through life, especially in my business journey, with integrity. Honesty, authenticity, or other values, but integrity is such a big thing. And I think if that, and a lot of the stuff you alluded to there, back to, we go right back to the conversation we had halfway through where you're, you're talking about the 127 members of staff and that situation. The right thing to do was that, and you followed that. Yeah. And that's. Yeah. Um it was a, a, a actually it was gen, the general counsel at, at CBS Corporation um, at the time when I worked at, at CBS Outdoor. Um, he said, "Of integrity, um, it's doing the right thing, even when no one's watching." And 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 for me that captured you know then you can rest your head on the pillow at the end of the night, be happy with yourself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you know, aside from that. Ryder Cup victory. That's also a measure of success, eh? <laughs> Mate, the other measurement is a massive trophy that's sitting in my, <laughs> sitting in my office. Yeah. In, and it's got the blue ribbons on it. 100%. Indeed. <laughs> I love that. Gav, I'm going to tag you when I, when I post this one. <laughs> <laughs> Once or twice. Oh, mate, listen. Um, I love that. It's been... Uh, and, I, and as I knew it would be, like I said, me and you have had a, had coffees and had a beers and played golf and and had many conversations and and spoke along these lines. And I'm so glad we managed to get this and record it and be able to share it and your views and and what you're trying to do with EMW and and as a team and what you're doing. It's been a pleasure, obviously, working with you. I guess over the la last year or so as well. Um, 
and it's been great to to share that story. I'm I'm just keen as we sort of come towards and and we wrap up. Tell me what the what the future holds for you and and the MW. Um, who knows? Uh, you know, I I think um, keep adding value. Um, yeah, and, and and then we'll see where that that leads. I mean, mm. certainly for free MW, um, it's a growth journey mm. for us. Um, you know, we we continue to build uh, on the the work of you know those others that you mentioned in mm. the EMW team um, as we build those relationships with, with those in in the local community and and beyond. You mm. know, we've got offices in. Um, London, uh, in Milton Keynes, uh, mm. we've got clients for, from all over. Mm. Uh, but just to carry on building, deepening those relationships and, and being part of the communities that we serve, uh, mm. that's, that's what I hope. Amazing. Amazing, mate. Listen, thank you so much. I look forward to getting on the golf course with you again soon and, um, and, and, and going out and having a few drinks, I'm sure, and seeing you at our top table events as well and, and sharing your knowledge, wisdom and, and, and insights and everything with, with everyone. So, mate, listen, thank you so much for coming on. It's been, it's been an absolute pleasure. Our privilege. Thank you very much, sir. Mate, legend. And that, as I say, is a wrap. <laughs>